Good evening friends, I welcome you all to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by the Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 30th November 2023. Here are the list of articles which we are going to discuss today. So without delay, let us get into discussion. Look at this news article. Recently, Egypt introduced a resolution in UNGA. This resolution is against the illegal occupation of Golan Heights region by Israel. This Golan Heights region was originally a part of Syria. Nearly 91 countries supported this resolution which has condemned Israel. India also voted in support of this resolution. Few countries like USA, Australia, Canada, UK voted against this resolution that is in favor of Israel. See, this is the crux of the news article which was given here. As we all know that the mains 23 was over and we are all shifting our gears towards prelims 24. So let us see an important world location and know how it was captured by Israel and other regions which are important using this map. Look at this map. See, Golan Heights is a region located in southwest Syria. It is bordered by Israel, Syria, Lebanon and Jordan. In 1967, six-day war was fought between Israel on one side and Arab nations of Egypt, Syria, Jordan on other side. During this war only, Israel has won and captured the Golan Heights region from Syria. Also note that in this war, Israel took control of several territories including West Bank from Jordan and Sinai Peninsula from Egypt. After the war, Israel began establishing settlements in Golan Heights. See, this move was widely condemned by international community including UN. In 1981, Israel officially annexed the Golan Heights. The UNSC passed a resolution in the same year and declared the Israeli annexation as a null and void. So, as of now, Golan Heights remains a point of contention between Israel and Syria. See, Syria demands the return of Golan Heights because of the region's strategic and historical significance. On the other hand, Israel argues that Golan Heights is essential for its security interest because of the topographical advantages. Golan Heights have high elevation that provides a vantage point overlooking northern Israel. See, the international community, including UN, does not recognize the Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights, considered it as an occupied territory. The situation still remains unsolved and let us see what happens in the future. Here note that the Golan Heights is bordered by four countries that is Syria in the east, Jordan on the south, Israel in the west and Lebanon in the north. Now look at the map. Apart from Golan Heights, we also need to know about the areas which are very important in this region. See, this is Sinai Peninsula which belongs to Egypt and it was annexed by Israel during the Six Days Wars of 1967. But Israel returned this territory back to Egypt in 1982 as a part of peace treaty. Look at this point. This is West Bank, which was originally a part of Jordan. It was bordered by Dead Sea and Jordan on the east. This region was originally designated as Palestine by UN partition plan. But in 1947 war, it was annexed by Jordan. Then in 1967, it was captured by Israel and at present, Israel controls this region. Look at this small territory. This is called Gaza Strip. It is occupied by Egypt after the 1947 war. Then in again in 1967 war, it was taken back by Israel. At present, this territory was under the control of Israel. See, this strip was bordered by Mediterranean Sea, Egypt and Israel. See, this is all about this news discussion. In this discussion, we saw some of the important parts in the West Asia which will often come in our exams. This is all about this news discussion. In this discussion, we saw some important geopolitical parts which will often come in our exams. So with this learned points, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article for our analysis. Look at this editorial article. This editorial article is about the election commission. This article discusses the challenges of enforcing the model code of conduct or MCC during the election campaigns in India. It mentions the recent instances where the election commission of India invoked the MCC against several political parties. This includes various CMs and national level figures for alleged violations. The article goes on to criticize the selectivity of ECA in responding to the complaints, particularly in cases which is involving the ruling party. The article also raises concern about the proposed move of the government, that is, the chief election commissioner and other election commissioners, appointment, conditions of service and terms of office bill 2023. See, this would give the ruling party a significant control over appointing the ECA members. 
this move according to the article could potentially jeopardize the independence of the commission and could affect the fairness of elections this is about the editorial here since this article talks about the independence of eca let us try to solve the main question regarding the same look at this question what are the constitutional safeguards to ensure the independence and impartiality of the election commission of india and moreover discuss the limitations to the functioning of eca this question will be asked in the gs paper 2 under the topic of appointments to various constitutional posts power functions and the responsibility of the various constitutional bodies see the question is very straightforward we have to write about the constitutional safeguards which are available to the eca then we have to discuss about the limitations in the functioning of this body now let us start answering the question in the introduction you can write about the importance of free and fair elections in a democratic country like india you can mention that free and fair elections are fundamental pillars of democratic country election hold elected officials accountable for their actions elections are also essential in safeguarding the individual rights and freedom finally regular free and fair elections ensures a political stability in the country this is done by allowing a peaceful transfer of power this stability is crucial for the economic growth social progress and overall development of our country to ensure free and fair election we need an independent body in india we have the eci or election commission of india to ensure that the elections are conducted in a free fair and transparent manner but for the election commission to perform its duty it needs to be independent this can be your introduction now coming back to the body of the answer here first we have to write about the constitutional safeguards that ensures the independence of eci see right like this the election commission of india is a constitutional body which got established under article 324 of the constitution to ensure independence this article contains the following provisions firstly the tenure of cec is secured the chief election commissioner and other commissioners have a tenure of 6 years up to the age of 65 whichever is earlier in addition to this the cec cannot be removed from the office except in the same manner and the same ground as the judge of supreme court to make it clear the cec can be removed with the president based on the resolution passed in parliament see this resolution for the impeachment should be passed by special majority in both the houses of the parliament moreover the reason for the impeachment can be either on the ground of proved misbehavior or incapacity thus the cec does not hold his or her office as under the pleasure of the president even though she or he got appointed by the president not just the cec the other ecs also had the security of tenure any other election commissioner or regional commissioner cannot be removed from the office except on the recommendation of the chief election commissioner this is the first safeguard provided by the constitution the second one is regarding the service conditions when we look at the service condition of the chief election commissioner it cannot be varied to her or his disadvantage after their appointment both these provisions are explicitly mentioned in the article 324 clause 5 of the constitution lastly you can also mention about article 324 class 1 in this context it specifically states that election commission is responsible for the superintendence direction and control of the preparation of electoral rolls for and the conduct of the elections this elections can be for the elections of parliament state legislature office of president and vice president this ensures the independence of eca as no other body can interfere in its functioning see these are some of the constitutional safeguards that ensures the independence of eca having addressed the first part of the question now let us move on to the second part in the second part we have to write about the limitations in the functioning of eca here you can mention the following points highlighting the limitations the firstly you can mention that eca has no legal backing to punish the offenders for the violation of mcc this effectively makes the eca a toothless body then you can mention that ECA lacks power to deregister a political party see under section 29a of the RPA the election commission has the power to register but it lacks the power to deregister the political parties the ECA also has no power in enforcing the inner party democracy and regulation of party finances this also acts as an impediment in the functioning of election commission of india then you can also mention the executive influence on the appointment of the ECA the government continues to appoint the election commissioner on its own in spite of the fact that multiple commissions have advised it to stop this practice 
since the commissioners are getting appointed by the current government they might feel obliged to the government this also affects the impartial functioning then you can also mention the lack of financial independence of the eca because the expenses of the ec are not charged on the consolidated fund of india it is still dependent on the union government for financial matters this also curtails the independent functioning moreover you can also mention that eca does not have a independent staff of its own wherever election takes place it has to depend on the staff of central or state governments for effective functioning this also limits the capacity of eca to enforce the free and fair elections guys you can mention all these points highlighting the limitation in the functioning of eca now we have addressed both the part of the question now we shall move on to conclusion part see in questions like this your conclusion can be a way forward approach that is you can mention some step to ensure the autonomy of eca the steps like firstly you can mention that the appointment process should be made transparent here you can quote the suggestions made by ghost farming committee 1990 the committee suggested that ceg should be appointed with the president in consultation with the chief justice of india and the leader of opposition in lok sabha the rest of ec should be appointed in consultation with the chief election commissioner secondly you can mention that the expenses of the eca must be charged on the consolidated fund of india this will give financial autonomy to eca finally you can mention the steps must be taken to create a permanent independent secretary rate for the election commission of india this will protect his staff from the various pulls and pressure from the executive this can address the conclusion part to make you guys an active participant you can also write your own answer and feel free to write and post it in the comment section so there will be a win win situation for both of us see this is all regarding this question discussion in this discussion we saw about the constitutional safeguards of election commission of india and in the second part we also saw about the issues which are limiting the powers of the eci see with this learned points let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article for our analysis look at this news article yesterday the union cabinet approved the extension of pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana for another 5 years this decision was taken days after the prime minister announcement at an election rally in chatisgarh This is the crux of the news article. In this discussion, let us understand some important points about Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana or PMGKAY. See, PMGKAY was launched in April 2020. Under the scheme, the government is currently providing free food grains to interstate migrants and poor peoples across India. Note that the scheme was included under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan. Now, let us see a quick brief about what is Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan. or aba see aba is an economic stimulus package introduced in may 2020 that is during the covid-19 outbreak it was aimed at creating a self sufficient and resilient india know that this package is focusing on various sectors in india including cotton industries msme laborers middle class people industries and so on so basically aba is a relief package that was launched to attain economic recovery post the covid-19 pandemic now coming back to our discussion on pmgkay see to address the food insecurity which was associated with the covid-19 pandemic the central government has introduced it in april 2020 later it got included in the aba as i said earlier the scheme aims to provide free food grains to interstate migrants and poor peoples know that the scheme is implemented by ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution since its launch PMJKAY was extended multiple times recently the central government extended the scheme for another 5 years that is from jan 2024 to december 31 2028 now let us see the benefits of this scheme nearly 81.35 crore people are being benefited under the PMJKAY scheme under the scheme the government provides 5 kg of free wheat or rice per person per month know that wheat has been allocated to six states or union territories such as Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Delhi and Chandigarh. The rest of the state will be provided with rice. Here note that till December 2022 food grains were provided over and above the regular monthly entitlements under the National Food Security Act 2013. Here let us see a quick brief about NFSA. Under NFSA the entitled beneficiaries such as Antyodhya Anna Yojana AAY card holders and PHH or priority household card holders received subsidized food grains here priority households includes the poorest section of our population and moreover AAY card holders are the poorest of the poor section 
know that both of them were given were given food grains at a rate of rupees 3 per kilogram of rice and rupees 2 per kilogram of wheat for priority households the center provided 5 kg of food grains per person per month at the above set subsidized rate then for aav the center provided 35 kg of food food grains per family at the same above said subsidized rate in addition to that entitlements such families will also receive extra food grains under the pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana see this distribution apparatus was existed until december 2022 however in january 2023 the central government merged the pmgkay with the nfsa act so now the aav card holders and the priority households receive their entitlements at the free of cost this means they don't need to pay even the subsidized rate here note that the extra provision of food grains that was earlier granted under the pmgkay have been stopped but they will receive their already existing entitlements at free of cost to sum it up what we discussed under the pmgkay the central government currently provides 35 kg of free food grains to aav card holders and 5 kg of free food grains per person per month to priority households see the eligible criteria for the scheme are given here for your reference please go through it see this is all about the pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana with all these learned points let us uh, complete this discussion and take up the next news article for our analysis look at this news article yesterday the union cabinet approved the continuation of fast track special court scheme or ftsc scheme the scheme has been extended till march 31 2026 this is the crux of the news article In this discussion let us understand some points about fast track special court scheme or FTSC scheme see the FTSC scheme was launched in October 2019 the scheme was created under the criminal law amendment act 2018 know that this particular act was brought up to expedite the trial of cases related to sexual offenses the act also mandates immediate relief to victims of sexual offenses based on these provisions the central government has created the fast track special courts or ftsc under the scheme the government aims to set up numerous courts including exclusive pocso courts across the nation these courts will ensure the timely disposal of cases related to rape and pocso act here note that ftsc is a centrally sponsored scheme this means the fund of the scheme will be shared jointly by both states and center know that the scheme is implemented by the department of justice which comes under union ministry of law and justice now let us talk about the futures of this scheme the ftsc scheme is being operated with a total budgetary outlay of 1952 crores in this budget rupees 1200 crores is being given by the central government and the remaining 744 crores will be shared amongst the state here note that the central share for the scheme is being funded from the nirbhaya fund Now let us see a quick recap about what is Nirbhaya Fund. See, Nirbhaya Fund was set up in April 2015. This fund was created in the memory of Jyoti Singh, who is referred as Nirbhaya, which means a fearless girl. In December 2012, Nirbhaya was assaulted and brutally raped in a moving bus in Delhi. It shook the conscience of the nation. So, to avoid such brutal incidents in the future, the government has set up Nirbhaya Fund. See, Nir- Nirbhaya Fund is a non lapsable corpus fund which is being administered by department of economic affairs ministry of finance this fund can be utilized for projects which are specially designed for the safety and security of women so using this fund central government is financing the ftsc scheme now let us come back to our discussion see each ftsc court comprises of one judicial officer and seven staff members since the introduction of the scheme about 30 states and union territories have actively participated in the scheme as of now a total of 761 fast track courts including 414 exclusive pocso courts have been set up across the country see the courts have resolved over 195000 cases they continue to provide timely justice to the victims of sexual offenses even in the remote part of our country see for the robust implementation of the scheme the government has created an online monitoring framework This helps in monitoring the monthly case statistics of the country. See, coming back to the scheme duration, initially the scheme was announced for one year. Later, it got extended for additional two years. That is until March 31, 2023, and now it has been further extended until March 31, 2026. To summarize our discussion, the central has launched the fast track special court scheme to expedite the trial of cases 
and to deliver immediate relief to the victims of sexual offences. See, this is all about the discussion. In the discussion, we saw about the Fast Track Special Court Scheme or FTSC Scheme and in the process, we also saw about a little background about nearby fund. So, with this, all these learned points, let us conclude this discussion and let us take the next news article for our analysis. Look at this article from the science page. This article is speaking about the fast radio bursts or FRB. This article explains the mystery associated with the FRBs. So, let us understand some prelims related facts about this phenomenon. First of all, what are fast radio bursts? See, FRBs are bright bursts of radio wave signals. It means they are sudden signals in a radio wave frequencies. Know that they were discovered in 2007. Though, though they are looking like flickering stars, know that they are not stars. Moreover, FRBs last only for milliseconds in the sky. Because of this, it is difficult to detect and determine their position in the sky. Now, let us see what is the origin of this phenomenon. Generally, FRBs are spotted in various parts of the universe. So, their origins are unknown and their appearance is highly unpredictable. But, the astronomers are saying that the magnetars could be a likely source of FRBs. Let us see what is magnetars. See, magnetar is a type of neutron stars that has extremely powerful magnetic field. Here, a neutron star is a celestial object which has a very small radius, typically about 30 km. Know that they have a very high density and is composed of closely packed neutrons. Moreover, they are formed by the gravitational collapse of a massive star after a supernova explosion. See, before Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment or CHIME experiment, only a few FRBs were identified. But the CHIME project has nearly quadrupled the number of FRBs which were discovered. So, with more observations, astronomers would soon find the origins of FRB. We can generally know about FRB by their defining properties. So, we should know about their defining properties. And the defining property of FRB is their dispersion. Generally, these bursts produce a spectrum of radio waves. Know that when these waves travel through matter, they disperse at high radio frequencies. By doing so, they can be detected earlier at the telescope than those at low frequencies. See, what is the use of studying FRBs? This dispersion phenomenon allows the researchers to learn about two important things. Firstly, by measuring this dispersion, we can analyze about the matters that radio waves would have passed through when they travel towards Earth. By doing so, we can be aware of the missing matters of the universe. Secondly, by measuring dispersion, astronomers can indirectly determine the distance between the two astronomical things. To put it simply, the larger the dispersion, the more material the signal would have passed through. So, it means the bus would have traveled farther across the universe. To sum it up, the fast radio bursts are bright flashes of light that appear for few milliseconds. It comes from the distant galaxies and is extremely powerful. The magnetars, a type of neutron star, is speculated to be the source of this FRBs. See, this is all about this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the fast radio bursts, its properties, its origin, and we also saw about the defining property of the bursts. With these learned points, we can conclude this discussion and take up the next news article for our analysis. Look at this news article. After extensive and rigorous efforts, the workers trapped in the partially collapsed Sikyara tunnel in Uttarakhand were successfully rescued. Know that in the final stages of the evacuation process, rat hole mining was employed. This is the crux of the news article. In our discussion today, let us see all about rat hole mining. See, first of all, rat hole mining is a form of mining that involves digging a narrow horizontal tunnels, which are usually 3 to 4 feet high, into the ground to extract minerals. In India, rat hole mining is mainly employed to extract coal. See, this type of method is typically used to extract coal from regions like Meghalaya. Now, you might have a question. Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand also have a lot of coal reserves. But in the states, rat hole mining is not employed. So, what makes the conditions in Meghalaya unique which makes it employ say rat hole mining? See, in Meghalaya, rat hole mining was employed due to various reasons. The first reason is the terrain and economic viability. The coal seams in Meghalaya are very thin. This thin coal seams makes traditional open cast mining less economically feasible. Rat hole mining was considered as a more viable method despite its hazards because 
it was believed to be more cost effective for extracting coal from this region the second reason is limited control over the land see meghalaya is a sixth scheduled state where the coal mines nationalization act of 1973 does not apply land owners in meghalaya also own their minerals beneath their lands resulting in the limited governmental control over the mining activity this lack of stringent regulation led to the prevalence of unregulated mining industries these are the two main reasons why rat hole mining is employed in meghalaya moving forward let us see the issues with the rat hole mining the first issue is with the safety hazards rat hole mining poses various risk to the workers this risk include poor ventilation lack of structural support leading to mine collapses and the potential for flooding inside the tunnels these safety risk might turn fatal for the workers the second issue is the environmental degradation unregulated mining led to severe environmental degradation rat hole mining in meghalaya has led to deforestation land degradation and contamination of water bodies with a high concentration of various toxic substances like iron and other heavy metals for example take two rivers river lukya and river mintu became too acidic to sustain aquatic life due to the pollution caused by rat hole mining third issue is exploitation and child labor reports indicate that the exploitation of labor including children who got employed in this mining practices children are mainly employed in this mining due to their ability to fit into the narrow tunnels due to the above mentioned issue the ngt national green tribunal banned the rat hole mining in meghalaya in april 2014 despite the ban illegal mining continued leading to the tragic incidents such as drowning of miners in december 2018 so in addition to banning this practice steps must be taken to adopt more sustainable and environment friendly mining practices this is because meghalaya has 576.48 million metric tons of coal reserves only by adopting sustainable and environmental friendly practices we can offer a long term solution by balancing development and environment see this is all regarding the discussion in this discussion we saw about the rat hole mining its ill impact on the environment this is all about the discussion now with this let us move on to the next part of video that is to discuss the preliminary practice question today we are having four questions let us solve them one by one see the first question with reference to the pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana or bmgkay consider the following statements the statement one tells that the eligible beneficiaries under the scheme are provided with food grains at a subsidized rate see from our discussion we can say that earlier it was the case but after january 2023 the scheme got merged with the nfsa now the food grains are given at free of cost so the first statement is incorrect see the second statement the interstate migrants are covered under this scheme see from our common sensical understanding we can easily say that this statement is correct so the correct option is option b now see the second question consider the following statements regarding the fast track special court scheme or ftsc see the first statement it was launched under the criminal law amendment act 2018 news article discussion we can easily say that this statement is correct see the second statement it was brought up to expedite the trial of the criminal cases against the mps and mlas see this statement is incorrect because the scheme was brought to expedite the trials of the cases primarily related to sexual offenses see it also aims to deliver immediate relief to the victims so the statement 2 is incorrect see the third statement it is a central sector scheme see the third statement is also incorrect because we know that the scheme is centrally sponsored but the fund should be shared between state and central government so we can eliminate that statement 2 and 3 are incorrect so the correct option is option a see the third question the term fast radio bursts frb sometime appears in the news refer to which of the following see from our news article discussion we can easily say that the third statement a bright flashes of light from the distant galaxies that appear for a few milliseconds in space see this statement is correct so the correct option is option c see the final question of the day it's a upsc previous equation under which schedule of the constitution of india can the transfer of tribal land to private party for mining will be declared null and void see the four option the third schedule deals with the oath and affirmation of union ministers mps mlas etc so this option is wrong see the third option ninth schedule see we know that ninth schedule deals with the laws which are given immunity from the judicial purview this option is also wrong see the option d twelfth schedule we know that the schedule deals with the functions of the urban local bodies 
so this is also wrong so the correct option is option b see the main question based on our uh, today analysis is given here interested aspirants can write the answer and post it in the comment section if you like today's video like comment and share it with your friends for more updates regarding our upsc preparation subscribe to shankar ias academy thank you